Elon is about to say goodbye to Starbase. Yes, you heard right. While the entire aerospace industry was paying attention to Starship's recent consecutive tests, a major reorganization was quietly underway at SpaceX's Texas launch facility. This is part of the plan to push for the next milestone of the super mega rocket, Starship in 2024. So what actually happened? Who will take over Starbase instead of Elon? Why did Elon Musk select them? Starbase has recently caught the public's eye with a series of hot news. Besides the announcement through SpaceX's official X account, one of these news was also announced by Kathy Lewiters, general manager of Starbase. You may have only recently heard of her as one of SpaceX's official spokespersons at Starbase. And that is extremely reasonable. Previously, Kathy Luters served as NASA Human Spaceflight Chief. After stepping down from NASA in April this year, she has been hired by SpaceX to hold a general manager position in Starbase, and her task is to report directly to SpaceX President and Chief Operating Officer Gwyn Shotwell. So I think you should follow her X account now if you haven't already unless you want to miss out on important information regarding Starship operations, especially within the context that the Boca Chica spaceport is going to be the premier center for this mega rocket. One more hint, Elon Musk seems less active in updating Starship activities. For example, it wasn't until two days after Ship 28's static fire test that we saw his tweet on X on the subject. That may mean that Elon Musk will no longer hold a key role at Starbase. There will be a group of people handling daily tasks for him such as speaking to the public and responding to the press. The reason for this transfer of power may simply be because Starship's progress is growing too fast. Just one month after Flight 2, SpaceX quickly entered the series of tests for the next Starship's prototype, consisting of Ship 28 and Booster 10, which began with the static fire test of Ship 28. Positive signs from the November test inspired the company to plan more Starship test flights in 2024, so he really needs extra support while he focuses on his other company's projects. To be honest, it's not the first time a significant reorganization has been undergone in SpaceX's Texas. In 2022, there was a notice that SpaceX President and CEO Gwen Shotwell and Vice President Mark Juncosa, two of the most influential executives at the company, would oversee the facility and operations of the company's Starbase location, both of them seemingly stepped in for Elon Musk as the CEO shifted his focus to Twitter, meaning that Elon Musk would step back from some of his day-to-day -day at this spaceport. Twitter by then was in a precarious position after the Tesla CEO and SpaceX founder had purchased the social media platform for an inflated price of $44 billion, saddling it with immense debt. The immediate implementation of far-reaching changes, or threats of changes, scared off existing advertisers, slashing the company's already tenuous revenue, and Musk himself admitted that the company as it stood was losing billions of dollars per year and could face bankruptcy if it's planned to charge a subscription for a verification badge, a service that was, in theory, previously free, was not highly successful. However, as you can see, even though he handed over Starship operations to his colleagues, that does not mean that the Starship program will be delayed or that Elon will no longer focus on the Red Planet program. Mars colonization is always the most ambitious mission of his life, so any survival decision requires careful planning in advance. Musk's plan at that time was to appoint Gwen Shotwell to officially assume oversight of the company's Starship program and Starbase facilities. Additionally, SpaceX CEO Mark Juncosa, an engineer who had successfully led the Starlink program since Musk fired several cautious CEOs in 2018, has assumed technical leadership of the Starship program in the summer of 2022. It could be said that this reorganization demonstrates a sense of urgency within the company to get Starship flying. Both Shotwell and Juncosa have been at SpaceX since its early days under Musk. For those living under a rock, Starbase's situation at that time was quite at rock bottom. SpaceX was gearing up everything for Starship's first orbital flight, including completing Starbase's infrastructure that required an environmental assessment key to the company receiving a license from the federal regulator for Starship launches. After a long wait, the FAA finally finished this assessment in June 2022, but as a result of that FAA decision, SpaceX was required to take more than 75 environmental mitigation steps. 
In 2021, Musk described a crisis with Raptor engine production, which caused the removal of a vice president from the program who left the company. Since then, SpaceX ramped up Raptor production to seven engines per week, which is important given that each super heavy booster requires 33 engines and each Starship rocket has six engines. To adapt to the increasing amount of work, Musk pushed for employees at its Hawthorne, California, headquarters to move to Starbase to help with the Starship effort. The company even rolled out an offer to salaried employees for pay bumps between 10% to 25% if they moved to South Texas. The company also increased its hourly pay rates for non-salaried Starbase employees, as well as added performance-based incentives for 2023. So why did Elon choose those faces to be on the Starbase board of directors? Musk is self-made, but he's relied on several trusted advisors or lieutenants to help him build and lead his companies. For SpaceX's Starship program, the most ambitious mission of his life, he had to choose people more carefully. For that reason, the people he chooses must have special potential. First of all, let's talk about the new face, Kathy Luters, who quietly made history at NASA. In her working time at NASA, she served as commercial crew program manager in 2013, and then as full-time manager the following year. Through Luters' quiet efforts, the first human beings to launch from American soil since the space shuttle's retirement in 2011 traveled to the International Space Station on May 30, 2020, aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon. Since then, the Crew Dragon has made a number of flights, both for NASA and private customers, proving the commercial crew concept. The great efforts she contributed to both NASA and SpaceX left a huge impression on Elon's mind. The next up is Gwyn Shotwell, well, a much familiar to SpaceX fans. Known as SpaceX's secret weapon, it's entirely possible that SpaceX wouldn't have survived if her sales acumen hadn't convinced NASA to take a billion-dollar bet on the company in 2008. But NASA ultimately took that bet right when SpaceX needed it most, and Shotwell went on to help secure another several billion dollars of launch contracts from all possible sectors. It's possible that her day-to-day -day work mainly focused on SpaceX's Dragon, Falcon, and Starlink programs but Starship's program would almost not be able to progress, as far as it is today, without being funded by contracts lucrative that Shotwell has achieved in those times. Gwyn Shotwell serves as President and Chief Operating Officer for SpaceX, and she is responsible for day-to-day -day operations including production, launch, sales, mission management, and finance, as well as managing all customer and strategic relations to support the company. In short, She's in charge of selling rockets and dealing with Elon Musk. Unlike a lot of other SpaceX employees who grew up fascinated by rockets, she wasn't. Born in Chicago, she is the child of an artist and a brain surgeon. Per her mother, she wanted her to become an engineer, but Shotwell thought those people just drove trains, so to help her daughter understand what they do, her mother took her to a Society of Women Engineers event. For the first time, she met female engineers, and the beautiful suits they wore fascinated her so much that she wanted to one day become a mechanical engineer like them. Her educational journey started with Northwestern, where Shotwell studied mechanical engineering with a minor in economics, as well as a master's degree in applied mathematics. Her original plan was to work in the auto industry and began working for the Chrysler Corporation in engine research a job she initially enjoyed but later found tiring with its many levels of highs of approvals and rules, limiting productivity and innovation. She then moved to Aerospace Corps for 10 years to learn the business of defense contractors, where she was a thermal engineer and project manager. However, one more time she asked the question about the meaning of work as the hands-on experience here could not keep up with her expectations, she felt like she was just suffering papers. To get more hands-on experience building and designing rockets, she moved to Microcosm, a small space startup whose mission was to design and build low-cost rockets and parts. In a typical environment like a startup company where you have the opportunity to learn many things, experience a lot of practice and maximize your creativity, Shotwell learned possibly the most important lessons that would benefit her later at SpaceX. On the fly, she learned about business development including management skills, and how to sell aerospace products to the government and large companies. With her talent and efforts, she is widely known as the best saleswoman.
Parallel to this, Elon Musk was in the early stages of developing SpaceX, a revolutionary and potential company in the aerospace industry. Like lots of other founders who hire adult supervision when their companies start to grow, SpaceX's founder needed a business development talent who knew what they were doing as an engineer. Through a meeting at a fateful party, Elon truly found treasure, and then he convinced Shotwell successfully to become the employee number seven in his young company, SpaceX. Over 20 years, working under a boss who constantly made ambitious goals and timelines, while many gave up, Shotwell's talent has the opportunity to shine brightly, perhaps regarding the rapid development of Starship, which is shown clearly through its second orbital test flight on November 18, most people suppose that it is based on technical development. To be honest, we cannot ignore another important factor, which is finances. Without the financial fundamentals, they will be limited in installing and testing new upgrades on Starship and its ground-based systems such as hot staging new design on some part of Raptor or water deluge system. It's safe to say that rocketry is a game dedicated to the rich. Begun in 2012, Musk estimated that the Starship program would cost between $5 billion and $10 billion to develop. This year alone, SpaceX planned to pump some $2 billion into a rocket system. You should forget or should not forget that SpaceX lost $968 million in 2021 and $559 million in 2022. The company just earned a tiny profit of $55 million in quarter one 2023. It is no doubt that Starship has made a large hole in the company's budget. Of course, even though he is the richest person in the world, Mr. Musk cannot pay Starship's expensive bills alone. So, as the president and bestseller, what did Gwyn Shotwell do to make SpaceX last and grow dramatically for more than 20 years? To answer the question, let's dive into how SpaceX generates revenue. You know, a commercial private company cannot remove business operations. SpaceX's main technology is rocketry, and Gwyn is building profitable businesses around this technology to support longer-term projects. In the business area, it's called by the term residual capability. A few great examples of residual capability as SpaceX's Game Changer exist. The first is doing business on Starlink, their satellite internet network. Elon Musk probably hadn't thought about providing internet service from space at all when started SpaceX. The internet was cool, but it didn't involve anything to Mars. That was only true before Gwyn created SpaceX's financial plan. By creating and launching their satellites, SpaceX could create a sustainable business here on Earth and help build technology that will be needed on Mars. Currently, as of early 2023, of all the satellites in operation, approximately 46%, 51% are Starlink, and this percentage is increasing. These have created a huge source of revenue. SpaceX's Starlink satellite connectivity unit is now breaking even according to Elon's post on X. According to unnamed people familiar with the matter, Starlink sales are expected to outpace and exceed the launch business next year. For next year, Starlink will account for more than $10 billion of total sales, representing the majority of SpaceX revenue. A tender offer at SpaceX earlier this year valued the company at about $150 billion. Leaked reports suggest Starlink posted $1.4 billion in revenue for 2022, up from $222 million the year before. Musk had previously predicted Starlink would make $12 billion and $7 billion in operating profit in 2022, having gained 20 million subscribers. As well as selling directly to consumers, Starlink has signed dozens of enterprise customers as well as wholesale agreements with telcos and resellers. The company has signed deals with some maritime and aviation customers and has formed direct-to-sell agreements with a number of telcos globally. Secondly, SpaceX earns money from the rocket launch service under commercial contracts with national organizations like NASA, private companies, and individuals. An interesting thing is that when Shotwell was a new member of SpaceX, she soon became the head of business development and was immediately assigned an unbelievable task by her boss selling some rockets that did not exist and had not flown before, of course. Sounds weird, right? Yes, it's time to pull the old strings. 
she began meeting with the United States government agencies and satellite companies to begin to persuade them to book launches on their still unflown Falcon 1 rocket. Somehow, the then young unicorn SpaceX landed its first contracts with agencies such as the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, a Malaysian satellite startup and above all with a large national organization, NASA not to mention a dozen Falcon 1 flights to other clients, all this happened before it every reaching orbit. The long-term close cooperation between SpaceX and NASA marked with a $278 million contract in 2006 requiring Elon Musk's company to develop Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon space capsule that would ferry supplies to the ISS. This also led to more lucrative contracts. Most notably, in 2021, the space agency signed a contract under the Artemis program with SpaceX to develop and manufacture Starship HLS and to conduct two flights, an uncrewed demonstration mission and a crewed lunar landing. Building a good relationship with an aerospace tycoon like NASA not only brings economic benefits, but also enhances the company's reputation day by day. It's one of the most efficient ways for SpaceX to market its products worldwide without spending a lot of money on advertising. And by generating extensive revenue for the company, Shotwell was taking on more of a leadership role in the company. Now she is president and chief operating officer at SpaceX, as well as Elon's intimate friend. Without her, it's so hard for SpaceX to be like today. While Elon Musk devotes his time and effort to other businesses outside of rockets, he really needs someone who can keep things organized and ensure cash flows in a positive trend. While Elon is so risky and he just loves to throw it all in one thing and leaves little margin for error like the way he rolled his dice when started SpaceX, he also needs someone who has a healthy balance. Fortunately, all of those are found in Gwyn Shotwell. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.